It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you create a VPC named prod in custom mode with two subnets, as shown in the diagram. You want to make sure that, one, only app VM can access the dbvm instance. Two, web VM can access app VM. Three, users outside the VPC can send HTTPS requests to web VM only. Which two firewall rules should we create? So in this case, the requirements are very clear. There are three bullet points that we need to meet. And we are also given the information that this VPC was created in custom mode. Let's do a deeper requirement analysis and see what we require. The first one says that only app VM can access the dbvm instance. So app VM should be able to access dbvm and only app VM. So traffic should flow only between these two. And if you allow a firewall rule in one way, it automatically uh, allows it in the reverse way also. So this is one path we require. Secondly, web VM can access app VM. So there should be traffic flowing between the web VM and the app VM. Third, users outside the VPC, which basically means from the outside world, maybe other parts of Google Cloud itself, should be able to send HTTPS requests to web VM only. So it should not be able to send it to app VM or dbvm. It should come only into web VM. And lastly, the VPC was created in custom mode, which means that there were no default subnets in all the regions. When you create a VPC in the default mode, it automatically creates subnets in all regions with the same IP address each time you do a default network, and it automatically creates a routes between them. So there were no subnets or routes to start with. And in custom mode, these two subnets, web and data, were created and the routes set for them. Now we need to control the transfer or the flow of data through them by setting the correct firewall rules. With that requirement set now, let's look at each of the options. But before we do that, let's also mark out what we do not want. The traffic has to follow from anywhere in the world, basically outside the VPC, via the web VM to the app VM, to the DB VM and back, of course. But it should not go directly from any of the users outside to the DB or to the app. And there should also no, not be any connection between the web and the DB. Now let's look at option A. Option A says, block all traffic from source tag web. So all the web VMs have a tag called web. And we are essentially requiring in this option that all traffic from this VM should be blocked. So it should not go here, it should not go here, it should not go anywhere else. Now that clearly doesn't work for us because we need traffic to flow from the web VM to the app VM. Whereas option A is suggesting this, right, that we block that. Therefore, option A is definitely not useful for us. Option B suggests allow traffic from source tag app from here to port 80 only. So any of the other machines receiving traffic from the app VM will receive it only at port 80. Does that work for us? No, it does not because the database is very unlikely that is going to be listening at port 80. Right? Usually it has a different port. Now it's not that it cannot listen at port 80, but it's very, very unlikely. So this traffic is unlikely to flow. Moreover, between the web and the app, the requests are coming in potentially in HTTPS. And unless the request is terminated here, the SSL is terminated here and then transferred back as HTTP, at port 80, 
this would not work, right? Chances are very high that the request is coming in as HTTPS and is probably getting passed on as HTTPS. So for both those reasons, this configuration is not going to work for us. And hence we will eliminate option B. Option C suggests that we allow all traffic from source tag app from the app VMs to source ta uh, target tag DB. So this is requiring traffic to flow between these two VMs. And you can see that no port has been mentioned. So irrespective of the kind of DB, all data should be able to flow through this on any port. Does that match our requirement? Absolutely, right? We need traffic flowing this way from app to DB. And that's what option C gives us. So option C is a definite yes for us among the two options that we need to choose. So C is good, we'll keep that. Let's move on and look at D. Option D suggests that we allow ingress traffic from 0000 slash 0 on port 80 and 443 for target web. When you say this side annotation 000 slash 0, you're essentially saying allow traffic from anywhere. So this allows all traffic from any machine VM computer from within Google Cloud or outside to be able to reach the web VM. And that is what we want, right? We want users outside the VPC to send HTTPS, HTTPS requests to the web VM only. So we need this thing to happen where Anybody in the world is allowed to send traffic to web VM, which is what we achieve by allowing this. The problem with this though, is that the requirement needs us to send only HTTPS requests. Whereas we have opened both port 80 and 443, which means we are opening up both HTTPS and HTTP. So for all other reasons, option D seems good, but this is throwing me off just a little bit. It is not an exact match. However, it is fairly good. And unless any other option proves better than this, I will, I will have to choose this one. So for now, we will keep it, but we are not entirely sure about it until we have seen all the other options too. Moving on to option E. Option E suggests allow ingress traffic using source filter equal to IP ranges where source IP ranges is 10, 10, 10, 10, slash 24. Now this side of notation, this side of range essentially says allow all traffic among 10, 10, 10, and then whatever, which means essentially we are allowing all traffic within this subnet. However, this is a superfluous setting because this traffic is already allowed. There is no need to set this again. So even though this gives us traffic, I mean, this setting allows traffic to flow between these two VMs, it was already there and we don't need to redo it. So for that reason, I'm going to eliminate option E. Now with these eliminated and some probably possible. Let's consider all of them together again. The ones that were closest to what we wanted was C to allow traffic between app and DB and D to allow ingress traffic from everywhere to port 80 and 443 coming into only web. And we already know that this traffic is open anyway within the subnet. This is um, this traffic is allowed unless specifically blocked by a firewall route, right? So that has not been done. Therefore, this is open, open and we have a full path that we want that is happening. The problem, of course, is that port 80 is open and that is not part of the requirement. So in an actual project, I wouldn't open port 80. However, in this scenario, in and in this particular question, rather, we have the best options that are available to us to solve this requirement or to meet these requirements are option C and option D to allow traffic from app to DB and then to allow traffic from anywhere to web DB. 
If you thought that content was great, you absolutely must check out all our new upcoming content. So subscribe right away. Thank you.